Hey guys, Coach Alex from Fast Fitness Tips. I want to talk to you about training and analysis tools today. Basically, which tool do you use to analyze your rides, if any? Uh, personally, I've used Power Agent for years. You know, when I bought the Power Tap wheel, oh, I don't know, what, six, six, seven years ago? They provided Power Agent. It wasn't the best program in the world, but you know, it did the job. It didn't have a social element. You know, if you want a social element, you got to say Strava is the way to go. Strava is like the big daddy of programs out there. It's got so many users, you know, so much sophistication. Yeah, it's good. But I'm talking about now the analysis side and sharing your rides with others, maybe doing a little bit of coaching that can be peer to peer coaching. You know, you don't necessarily have to sign up for a high level paid coach. You can get a lot of information and value from your riding friends if they're also using a power meter. So which program do you use guys? Now I've been struggling to find a decent program. Yeah, I've looked at the diary kind of program like today's plan, final surge is a competitor to that, which is actually free. But I don't like their presentation. I don't think they're very user friendly. But today I think I've cracked it. I've come across a program that's well presented, sophisticated in its analysis, bringing something to the table that Strava doesn't necessarily do, integrating with Strava so you don't lose anything. And it's got a social element too. You can share your rides with others. And it's called Intervals ICU. Check out Intervals ICU. I was lucky enough to record a short interview with David Tinker who created this. How has he created, by the way, such an awesome program in such a short space of time? I don't know. Apparently he's only been working on this for less than a year. This is what David had to say about Intervals ICU. Hi David, um, Alex from Fast Fitness Tips. We're here to talk about this excellent program that I've recently come across, Intervals ICU. Do you pronounce the bit ICU like the old uh, little communication tool that was around in the 90s? Well, it was more of a it's more of a hospital reference, actually, because if you're doing them <laughs> properly, that should be in your mind at some point. <laughs> okay. That's true. That's true. Um, so I'm I'm just kind of bowled over. I'm so impressed with this program because I've kind of stumbled upon it out of nowhere. But I notice Strava does have a, re a reference to it on its like um, activities analysis tools page, which not. I'm sure not many people actually look at, but they should because there's a lot of good programs on there. But I was expecting to see something that was very underdeveloped, looking very raw, maybe had a couple of features. But actually what I see on the screen puts Strava to shame itself. I mean, your presentation is just amazing. How did you come up with this program? What was the development cycle? Um, well, the initial problem I was trying to solve, I was doing some talk intervals and I was looking for some software which would visualize those easily. Um, yes. And also, you know, sometimes you just go and smash hills and, you know, forget to hit the lap button and all that. So then I also wanted to find intervals without having any input from the rider. Um, so it was those two problems I set out to solve. And uh, I did initial development to see if I could actually detect intervals, get that part of the code working. And I got that yeah. working reasonably well. Mm -hmm. So then I built a platform around that, essentially. Um, now, and also... Yeah, that's, that's amazing that you've come up with a way to detect intervals automatically. <laughs> I know there are sophisticated programs you can buy which, you know, purport to do the same thing. And there's a couple of that might do it for free, but you've got something that does it with Strava here. And also in a presentation, I think that most people will find reasonably easy to understand. Um, how, do, how do you do that? How do you query the data in, in a sophisticated way that automatically recognizes an interval? Because an interval could be a very sudden change in power from zero to like, you know, 250 or 350, or it could be, you know, relatively subtle. If you were going along on a steady baseline, you know, like TT effort, but then just kicking out a few over and unders, it wouldn't necessarily be that easy to detect them. No, it does best on, you know, fairly solid uh, square wave intervals. Um, yeah. It will find over and unders that it, it, it basically looks for points of high power and tries to grow them outwards to, you know, create an interval 
And then there's an algorithm which sees, you know, for the duration and the intensity, you know, because if your FTP is 300 watts and you do 300 watts for 30 seconds, that's probably not worthwhile considering an interval. So it has those sort of heuristics built into it. And then it goes through a uh, combining phase where if it has intervals that are very close together, it'll decide, well, actually, that's one interval. You know, maybe a car got in your way or something. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that's well, essentially it. You can use this indoors and outdoors. It works perfectly well on Zwift or yeah. sure other programs because it's querying the power file, isn't it? It's not dependent yeah. on the type of ride. Yeah, that's correct. It gets and, the hard data from Strava. Yeah. And you're also presenting on the screen, if you just go into activities page, not just the riders cycling um, activities. You're presenting all of their Strava activities, aren't you? Yes, that's correct. If you have um, uh, some activities you do of only heart rate, like say, you know, I don't have a power meter on my mountain bike, and if I do a four-hour mountain bike race, it's a bit irritating having a big hole in my, you know, my training training load for that. Yeah. So it'll actually learn. Um, it learns a function of um, I, I, of maps power to heart rate, to, so it can calculate a training load for heart rate only activities based on your previous uh, rides of power and heart rate. Um, so that's how it tries to do that. So it'll estimate it, that that's actually fairly accurate. Oh, yeah. so how much analysis was required, like um, secondary analysis on the data? I'm assuming Strava is presenting some of this automatically to you, but it looks like, I mean, for example, the weekly summaries are really nicely done. I'm guessing that is in Strava, but I've not seen it presented quite as neatly as that with the zones all added up and your cumulative time, your cumulative load. Have you had to reanalyze the data with the API interface? Yeah, I know Strava just gives you the right. So it'll give you a summary about an activity, you know, how long it was and moving time and all that. Um, but it also gives you, importantly, um, a series of streams. So it'll give you the watts for every second of a ride and the heart rate for every second and whether you were moving or not in your cadence. And then you can work everything out from there. So those, loans all, those zones are all calculated based on the training load calculated by intervals ICU. Um, that data doesn't actually come from Strava. So the load, um, is that the equivalent to TSS or? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty much the same. And the numbers come out very similar to Strava. So I think they're using the same uh, Cogger metrics. Yeah. Um, it's not exactly the same, but I mean, there's some data cleanup that goes on. Uh, intervals makes an effort to fix dropouts in your power automatically. Um, suspicious looking zeros that probably weren't zero, that sort of thing, which makes a little, little difference sometimes. Is there an issue? Uh, we haven't talked about this, but is there an issue when you stop a ride? I noticed this in Zwift. When I am in a race, for example, but then I come out of the race and I just fiddling around, but everything's still connected. And basically, I've got zero power signal, but the clock is still ticking. And then when I look at my Strava averages, obviously, they're kind of shot by having the zero there for a few minutes. And even in the Zwift, you know, on the Zwift program itself, it's the same. Is that a problem that can easily be dealt with? Um, well, I do look at whether you're moving or not to calculate those sort of things. So yeah. if you're not moving, it'll start discarding the data. So you yeah. stop for a coffee stop or something. Yes. Um, that won't any... mess up your stats too much. So you've got uh, a, di a variety of different screens. You can go into power analysis and you can go into, of course, interval analysis as well. Um, and you present a list list view of intervals. Um how much do you see this program as complete now or how much is it still evolving and you're open to user feedback? Uh, no, I'm very much open to user feedback. There's a lot lot more to do. I'm, I'm currently doing work looking at heart rate uh, compared to power. Okay. Because that's quite interesting to plot, especially if you do long rides to see, uh, you know, if you've done enough base training. Yeah. Uh, you know, if your heart rate's climbing in the second half of the ride and it was an endurance ride, you maybe need to do some more more base and so on. And also to try and estimate VO2 max from ride from heart rate and power data. Uh, it'd yeah. be nice to have some sort of measure of your fitness that doesn't require maximal testing to figure out. <laughs> Surprised how many people ride without heart rate, yet they're in serious training. But, you know, I've noticed with uh, programs like Zwift and Zwift Power, they're actually requiring heart rate, you know, heart rate measure to get another like validation that you're actually doing the effort. You know, you've not fooled yeah. the system. So although we've had a period where a lot of people are not using heart rate and they think, oh, well, I'll just use power now because I've got everything in my power file. Heart rate is actually bringing a lot of valuable data about the effort, you know, the effort that you're putting out as opposed to the power that you're putting out. Um, yeah. You know, I think it is very, very valuable. So it's nice to hear you 
potentially analyzing heart rate, like uh, heart rate ratio, power to heart rate ratio, that kind of thing. That will be very interesting. But it's um, mathematically quite difficult, I think, to tie those together. Yeah, uh, it, is, it is tricky. I've only just started working with it. But I've started to get some sort of things working. I mean, if you do a long interval, even if you just look on the right timeline chart and see what your heart rate did during that interval, yeah. gives you a good clue whether you could perhaps keep that power up for 20 minutes or not. You know, so you can have a quick idea of where your FTP is now, for example. Yes. So tell me what your plans are with the program. I mean, you've got an amazing product here. It's still in evolution, but the presentation is fantastic. Um, how do you intend to get the word out? Because, you know, it's pretty much new. I know you haven't developed it that long ago. It's, you know, within the last year. Um, I haven't personally seen it advertised, you know, even on various forums very much. What, what's, your, what's your plans, basically? Um, well, initially, I just started advertising on a, on a local forum, um, mm -hmm. you know, if, uh, just to get feedback on, on a, you know, not, not really a closed beta. Anybody could sign up, but, uh, yeah. you know, to try and get the bugs out of the system. And, you know, there were quite, a, you know, lots of weird things show up in power files, which aren't yours and so on. And then you, you know, develop workarounds for those. So a lot of that kind of work went on. Yeah. Um, now, you know, I've, I'm happy with the software now, so I'm actually more interested in getting it out to a wider audience. Yeah, nice. I think you've got a feature which... Um, if I may say, would help coaches, even peer-to-peer -peer coaching, which is like on the informal athlete-to-athlete -athlete basis, where you can send an invitation to your intervals ICU file, and then the coach or your other trusted athlete can comment on your intervals. In other words, you've got the option to share your data, and it's presented in the same very nice way. Can you see that kind of either peer-to-peer -peer coaching or more formal coaching arrangement, but using your software as being a kind of selling point, a feature. I say selling point, it's free right now, which I should say, <laughs> which is awesome. Uh, but do you see it as a feature, that kind of potential athlete-coach relationship? No, for sure. Um, yeah, that was the idea with that. And also just to, you know, help spread the word, you know, somebody can easily send a link to the to their own stuff on Intervals ICU. And also just to make it clear to people that nobody else can see your data, you know, not even your Strava friends, unless you specifically authorize it, um, is there, which is important for a lot of people. Yeah. Is there any issue with security with Strava generally? No, they, they're pretty good. Um, you, you get... Uh, you know, somebody has to actually authorize your application and you have to keep on asking for new tokens to access the API. Mm. So, you know, when they deauthorize you, whatever tokens you have don't work and you can't get more, which is fairly solid. And, and Strava's terms of use require you to delete all the data after seven days and so on. Could there be an issue in the future where Strava is less generous with its sharing? Either they charge for it or I think they do charge, don't they, a nominal amount? No, no, they don't. They don't charge. Okay, because I've noticed a few other programs like uh, Stravistics, which I, it's got a new name now, hasn't it? Um, they've said they can't display map data or something due to some Strava API restrictions. Um, um, yeah, Strava got all sorts of terms and conditions. I'm, I'm not sure what they really care about because I had to ask for um, increased rate limits and it requires submitting screenshots of everything you've got. And they said, oh, no, that's great. And they immediately listed my application on their site. So, you know, I, I think uh, if you're not trying to duplicate, like there are no maps, you know, I'm doing, obviously some of the information duplicates Strava. You can't have any power training tool which isn't going to duplicate some of their stuff or it wouldn't be very useful. But there's a lot of things in intervals I see which are not in Strava and it doesn't show you maps of your rides or any of that because Strava does that very well. Um, so I think um, as long as you actually are trying to do something different, I don't think they'll be too fast. Cool. Well, David, it's been awesome to talk to you. I think you've got really an amazing product. I'm just um, really bowled over by how far you've come. And you've put this product out for free right now. Let's just be honest between ourselves. Are you intending to charge for this in the near future? Uh, only if it became expensive to host, actually. Yeah. Um, but, you know, currently it doesn't cost a lot to host and I can handle thousands and thousands of users on the hosting environment. And, uh, you know, with Strava charging, you know, a dollar a month or something for, for Summit, they've kind of set quite a low bar as to how much you can charge for training software. Um, <laughs> and this was a project for me to learn a lot more about cycling training and to learn some new, new front-end technologies, um, which it has done. It's done both of those things. So 
Definitely. Uh, you've, done a, you've done an amazing job. Congrats. Uh, well, I just put the shout out to everyone who's watching this, you know, down, well, log on. You don't even have to download it. Log on intervals.icu. Just give permission. Uh, it'll sync up. Obviously, it takes a little while, doesn't it, to chug through yeah. your data to, you know, basically, I presume it's uploading it to your, your server side so it can analyze it. Uh, how far back does it go? Does it go right back to the beginning of your beginning of time? Um, it, it'll it'll download everything that you've actually reached in the activity view. So if you scroll back to older and older data, um, it'll start downloading. It'll do it slowly while you're online. So then as you go back, it'll start downloading old stuff. And it continues, you know, even if you're not using the application anymore, it'll continue downloading your activities in the background. Um, when it has basically spare Strava rate limit available, it then goes and finds all the activities and pulls them in. So the next time you come, you know, if you wait an hour or so and come back, it'll probably have everything. Does it need, uh, do you need to be on the web page for it to be syncing or does it do it once no, it's in an account? No, once it's started, it'll it'll sync while you're on the web page, but it also will do it in the background whenever it has um, spare capacity. No, that's uh, clever. That's clever. Yeah. So if you wait a few hours or come back the next day, and it should have everything you have. Yeah. And uh, just to say, you know, there's a few features in there. I'll let people find these out for themselves that are not presented either at all or automatically in Strava. So it's not just a new way of presenting the data. You're doing some analysis that is not necessarily available. And I think that's massive because, you know, like if you're a data geek like me, you just love to see the way, you know, things can be analyzed in different ways. So that's another massive selling point of this program. And of course, it's all web-based. That's the thing. Like people will probably know about Golden Cheetah. You know, you can download it, install it. It's a great program. It's got loads of features, probably too many features, but it's still like very high-end analytic software. Whereas you could just use yours for the diary view without any interval analysis. If you didn't want to do that, and you'd still get, you still have a really beautiful presentation of your Strava data. So well, one of the things I want to keep in the tool is to keep it simple. So I'm, you know, I'm working on the heart rate versus power. So one of the challenges now is to fit it on the activity power view about making things too messy, about taking up a lot more space. So you know, that's the way I'm trying to approach it. Rather than you know doing everything, do a few things with a nice UX so they're more accessible to people. Great job, David. Great to talk to you. Good luck with the program. I'm sure you're going to get loads more people. You might want to boost your services, <laughs> upgrade your processor power, whatever you need to do. <laughs> yeah, thanks. But thanks for talking with me. It's just an awesome bit of awesome bit of programming. Well done. Uh, thanks very much. All right. Take care. Cheers. Okay, guys, that was David Tinker talking about his program Intervals ICU. Now, if you want to see these programs reviewed, Check out the website from Darren Cope where he talks about cycling software. I'll put the link below. But yeah, there's no end of programs out there. It is a bit confusing. You know, you can go for a high level product like Training Peaks or WKO4, but you know, you are paying through the nose for those. I think the landscape is changing and we want something that's user friendly, well presented, ideally queryable on a web page, not necessarily a standalone program. And this is where Intervals ICU does really well. Now, for sure, there's new programs coming along that's all the time. Uh, one that I'm really excited about is Bereda, BeredaTraining.com. Now, this is Dennis Cutro's program. Check it out at BeredaTraining.com. This is the idea of peer-to-peer -peer coaching, you know, made large. Now, it's in beta at the moment. I've had a little look behind the scenes. Dennis given me a quick look at this. I am excited about it, but it's not out yet. There is a waiting list for it. Another one coming along is Six Cycle. Six Cycle, you can check out their website, but their description I think is Apple only right now. I'm not quite sure where it's at, but yeah, there's loads of these programs out there. But yeah, the one I'm really excited about is Intervals ICU. It's not in beta, so it's already out. It's free to use. It's well presented. It's responsive. You know, it's just good, guys. Give it a, give it a go. Tell me what you think. Give me your comments in the comments below if I've missed a program or you recommend something that you think is the best thing ever. Yeah, for sure. We'll all have a look at it. And do me one favor this month. Head over to the Strava website. Go on to our club, Fast Fitness Tips Club, and sign up. We've got about 300 users already. I'm trying to grow that on Strava. We're already accredited. 
and one person randomly drawn in May who signs up to our Fast Fitness Tips Strava Club will receive one of the standard training Bibles of which I seem to have collected all of them. You know what I'm talking about. Racing and training with a power meter, new edition, cycling science, Chung, uh, cutting edge cycling, cycling secrets, performing si perform performance cycling, you name it, they're all here guys. I'm going to review these for our website at a future date. But for now, guys, check out Intervals ICU. Check out our Strava Club. And see you in the next video, guys. Take care.